In the year 2048, catastrophic events have occurred on the planet Earth where residents are evacuated from their homes and numerous cities are now inhabitable. Due to this, the Titan operation, headed by Professor Martin Collingwood, studies the possibility of making the Saturn's largest moon, Titan, a new home for all people. One night, Lieutenant Rick Jansen, Dr. Abigail Jansen, and their son, Lucas, arrive at NATO operating base Atlantic Ocean. Dr. Freya Upton, a NATO scientist, tours them to the base and discusses all its amenities they get to enjoy. She also reminds them that they cannot leave the place until the experiment is finished. Colonel Solano, a U.S. military colonel, informs them that they are working hand-in-hand with Collingwood and his research. So, if there are problems with the experiment and the facilities in the NATO base, they'll get to act immediately. Later on, Freya excitedly tours them to their new huge and smart home provided by the NATO base. Rick's family happily enjoys moving into their new home, which is well-built and secured. The next morning, Collingwood doorbells at Rick's home to discuss Rick's upcoming experiment together with 14 other test subjects. Rick, a fighter pilot who survived a crash in the Syrian desert, gratefully volunteers to take part in the experiment. Collingwood also shows gratitude to Abigail for allowing his husband to take part in the experiment. Abigail is a medical researcher who has studied Collingwood's research and believes its purpose is for the future of all humanity. Sometime later in NATO operating base, Collingwood tells the test subjects the reason behind choosing Titan as the humanity's possible new home. It is the only other planet with an atmosphere which is possible in accommodating millions of people. However, Titan is a cold place with liquid methane in oceans and lakes and a nitrogen-rich atmosphere where people are unable to breathe. Consequently, Collingwood's experiment on the 14 test subjects mainly focus on their enhancement so they can breathe the air, swim the water, and survive the cold of Titan. Dr. Hernandez, one of the test subjects, questions Collingwood the success rate of the experiment and their possible death during the training and treatment. In Collingwood's response, clinical trials were successful, but if the test subject's body rejects the treatment and fails the training, they are to be sent home. After the meeting, the test subjects head to their designated medical facility to have their medical shots. Freya, assigned with Rick, discusses with Rick the 300 medical shots they have to take for the next few weeks so their bodies can adapt to the Titan environment. As a requirement, Rick takes his shot every day, which results in his body slowly changing. Sometime later, the test subjects and their families gather for lunch in Rick's house. They happily introduce themselves to one another and toasts on the dinner table. When the guest goes home at night, Freya drunkenly climbing the stairs is assisted by Rick to one of their bedrooms. Suddenly, Rick, unable to breathe, coughs continuously and sweats from his fever that instantly occurs. Now showing symptoms from his medical shot, Freya assists him to bed while he takes his pain-relieving pills. Days later, the first training of the test subjects is to hold their breath underwater in the pool. Rick, together with Tally, one of the test subjects, sits at the bottom of the pool while holding their breath. The NATO scientists, waiting above the pool, are fascinated with their capability to withstand not breathing for a very long time. 39 minutes in, Tally goes up and gets applause from the scientists for having a long record. Rick, still underwater, suddenly swims fast back and forth and surprises the scientists for doing so. He goes up and gets the longest record of 42 minutes for holding his breath underwater. The scientists and other test subjects applaud him as well. At night, Rick shows off his swimming skills to his family. Lucas and Abigail grow surprised as they witness how fast Rick swims. However, Abigail kissing Rick in the pool goes distracted as Rick's back suddenly shows blood veins. Confused by Abigail's reaction, Rick asks her if something is wrong, yet she chooses not to answer, saving him from worrying. The next morning, Abigail is conversing with Rain, wife of Zane, another test subject. Rain curiously asks her if she gets scared of her husband and their situation sometimes. In Abigail's response, she does get scared and believes that everything her husband does is for the greater good of humanity. 
Rain, not wanting Zane to take part in their experiment, has no choice but to stick by her husband's side for their family. Abigail persuades her to believe in Zane as the success of his mission will lead to a brighter future for all humanity. Sometime later in the afternoon, Abigail and Lucas pick up Rick from the base after his medical test and experiment. Then, Rick plays with Lucas at home and they giggly enjoy the game while Abigail reads Collingwood's research. At night in the bedroom, Abigail is freezing from the house temperature set by Rick on their digital thermometer. Abigail, wrapped in a blanket, goes down to search for Rick. When she sees him, she notices that he is feeling hot even though he is holding an ice bag. Rick explains that he does not feel cold from the room temperature nor the ice, which flabbergasted Abigail. As the experiment goes on, quickly, Rick's body becomes increasingly adapted to the Titan-like environment. Thereafter, Rick and the other test subjects continue to do an increasingly intense training. After some time, half of the test subjects goes training in a pool again, but with a liquid methane this time. Scientists wearing PPEs monitor the test subjects during their underwater training. They swiftly swim while surviving the cold and effect of the liquid methane. In the pool, Rick notices Tally feeling cold from the water, so he approaches her and trains her to cope with the cold temperature. Meanwhile, at a remote area, the other half-test subjects, wearing a portable nitrogen tank, breathe nitrogen from the nitrogen mask while running around, racing until they reach the finish line to test if they can breathe the air in Titan. After the training of all test subjects, they take a shower and notice changes from their bodies once again. Rick, done showering, sees his hair falling out and asks the other test subject if they experience it as well. Tally responds that she has lost some of her hair too a few days ago. As they are all happily conversing, Dr. Ramos, one of the test subjects, screams from a nearby shower and surprises them. Swiftly, they head to check on Ramos and find her convulsively lying on the floor with blood all over her chest and mouth. Hernandez and Freya quickly help her, yet she forcibly drives them away and falls dead instantly. The atmosphere in the room becomes deafeningly silent, with fear increasing amongst the test subjects. At night, they gather at Rick's house to discuss the death of Ramos they encountered earlier. Some of the test subjects are aware of the risk of taking part in the experiment, yet they are not informed that they can die during the experiment. Zane experiences mental breakdown and walks out the room and frustratingly converse with Rain outside, who tries to ease him. Unexpectedly, Zane furiously attacks Rain and forcibly throws a chair from afar. Other people witness his action and swiftly run to appease him. But Zane resistingly yells at them until Rick manages to calm him down. Rain runs toward Abigail so her husband won't reach her if he ever starts to attack again. The next morning, Freya arrives at Rick's house to give him his medical shots. She also pretentiously divulges to them that the cause of death of Ramos was due to kidney complications and not from the experiment. Rick disagrees since he sees what happened in the shower room and firmly believes that the convulsion is not from kidney failure. Yet Freya ignores his claims and proceeds on his shots and treatment instead. As an effect of the shots, Rick vomits blood into the toilet bowl while Abigail stays by his side. When he's done, Abigail cleans the toilet bowl and takes a small amount of blood to test secretly. As she exits the room, she notices that from television, digital thermometer, and other electronic devices, cameras are installed. Devastated, she sits on the patio while she watches Rick sitting at the bottom of their pool. Rick, on the other hand, confusingly notices huge amounts of skin are peeling from his body. With these changes happening to Rick's body, Abigail immediately tests the blood samples she obtained from the toilet bowl earlier. In a microscope, she notices black substances flowing in the blood. Confused at what it is, she decides to confront Collingwood later on. Meanwhile, back at the NATO base, Rick has the corneal surgery to have his aperture of the eye changed by Collingwood. After the process, Rick will be able to see through darkness in the Titan. Temporarily, his eyes are covered with cloth, making him unable to see and do his usual routine. Back home, Lucas assists him in preparing their food. However, at night, Rick starts complaining about his eyes hurting. Swiftly, Abigail calls on the ambulance to bring Rick to the medical facility of the base. Rick on an ambulance stretcher is bleeding his eyes out and Abigail panically calls on the medical staff. 
Furiously, Abigail confronts Collingwood about Rick's eyes, which she assumes are turning blind. In addition, she devastatingly complains about the cameras installed in their house without her awareness beforehand. In Collingwood's response, Rick will not turn blind and the cameras installed in their home are for security purposes. Abigail continues to question him of the black substance flowing on Rick's blood, causing him to change drastically. However, on that matter, Collingwood divulges nothing and orders her to go home while he deals with Rick's condition. At night in Rick's house, Abigail is packing Rick's clothes to bring to the medical facility. Suddenly, she grows confused with the police and ambulance siren sound approaching Zane's house. Curious, she goes outside and sees lots of police officers surrounding Zane's house. Shockingly, Zane, experiencing mental breakdown again, wrathfully throws rain on the window which makes her instantly fall dead. As the police officers witness the murder, they shoot Zane to death. Abigail grows frightened as she sees Rain dead and covered in blood. The next morning in the medical facility, Abigail visits Rick. Coming up with a plan, she steals Rick's access card and sneaks into Collingwood's office. In Collingwood's desk, she finds reports of autopsies of the numerous deceased test subjects on the failed experiment in the past. Shocked, she also discovers that the test subjects were having their DNA infused with animal DNA to create the next human species, Homo Titanians. With her findings, she realizes that Collingwood is planning to make Rick and the other test subjects Homo Titanians without their knowledge. Concurrently, Solano and the other US military officers arrive at the base to investigate the cause of Zane attacking his wife yesterday. Thereafter, Collingwood is having a meeting with NASA, Solano, and other U.S. military officers. Without sufficient evidence or moral justification, Collingwood is criticized by NASA and threatened with having his Titan operation shut down for engaging in forced evolutionary experiments. Solano orders Collingwood to leave the base and abandon his research. However, the U.S. Department of Defense orders Collingwood to continue. After the meeting, Freya worriedly persuades Collingwood to stop the experiment or there will be another bloodshed from their test subjects. With reputation and money on the line, Collingwood does not desire to stop and firmly claims that their experimentation will work this time. The next morning, Collingwood heads to Rick's house to notify Rick, who is now back home from the medical facility and will have the return of his vision in the next 24 hours. Abigail furiously confronts Collingwood again on the animal DNA infused in Rick's body she discovered yesterday. With the truth now uncovered, Collingwood admits to her and Rick that he does not know what will happen to Rick and the other test subjects until the experiment is complete. With Abigail growing devastated, Collingwood convinces her to allow Rick to have the last surgery or he will lose control of his emotions like Zane and die later on. Abigail walks out without giving Collingwood permission to the surgery of Rick. The next day, Rick removes his eye cloth and gets his eyesights back. Eventually, he shaves off his hair and notices his skin lighter than his normal skin color. Afterwards, he happily reports to Collingwood his extraordinary eyesights, which allows him to clearly see even during nighttime. Also, he gives his approval for the surgery Collingwood mentioned yesterday. Consequently, Rick and other test subjects willingly undergo major surgery to adapt to their new senses and become fully ready for their departure to Titan. In the medical facility, the test subjects are simultaneously having their surgeries. However, most of them reject the treatment and seizures. The doctors attempt to revive those who had their cardiac arrest, but fail, thus they instantly die. Tally and Rick are the only ones left alive from the 14 test subjects. As a final effect of the experiment, the two are completely transformed into Homo Titanians. Immediately, Collingwood informs Abigail of Rick's surviving the surgery and asks her to come to the base as soon as possible. Also, with the successful result, Rick will launch to Titan in the next two days. Later that night, Abigail, Lucas, and Andrew, Tally's husband, are sent to meet Tally and Rick, whose physical features are no longer recognizable. Abigail speechlessly weeps as Rick, on the other side of the glass, approaches her. Collingwood informs them that Tally and Rick can't communicate like humans anymore, but still have their emotions intact. He also tells them that Tally and Rick can go home with them before they launch to Titan. Back at Rick's house, Abigail assists Rick in wearing his clothes. Unaware of his capability, Rick unexpectedly punches Abigail in the face, making her grow frightened of him. Abigail weeps as she gets away from Rick, who is apologetically approaching her. Later that night, 
Rick swims for the last time in their pool. Abigail observes him, but gets surprised by Tally's sudden and uninvited arrival. As Abigail hides, she watches Tally and Rick silently communicating in the pool. When Tally manages to locate Abigail, she creepily stares at her. Consequently, Abigail swiftly heads to Lucas's room to hide. Meanwhile, Tally informs Rick of uncontrollably killing Andrew in their house by their unique way of communication. Back at Tally's, Andrew, covered in blood, is immediately seen by police officers. Due to that, they rush to locate Tally and find her in Rick's house. They surround her and point their weapon at her in case she attacks them. Carefully, Tally approaches them, yet gets shot multiple times. When she falls down on her knees, a police officer carefully approaches, but she gets up and stabs him in the chest. Quickly, another officer shoots Tally to death. Due to this, Rick attacks and kills all the police officers in his house. He drowns the remaining police officers in the pool until Abigail sees him and stops him from doing so. Ashamed of what he did, he flees the house to escape. As the death of numerous officers escalates to U.S. military troops, Colonel Solano leads the troop to go search and kill Rick. Collingwood, hearing Solano's plan, orders him to not kill Rick as he is an important scientific research subject and a property of the U.S. military. The U.S. military troops immediately search the whole area to find Rick. Abigail, knowing where her husband will hide, goes to a mountainous area alone to meet him. As she arrives, she yells Rick's name multiple times until he shows himself to her. When she sees Rick, she holds his hands and kisses him passionately. While having their moment, U.S. military aircraft whirls near them and arrests Rick. Morning comes, Abigail, in a medical facility, wakes up in a medical bed, wounded. Unable to recall what has happened to her last night, Collingwood informs her that Rick is arrested and she is found in a mountainous area. Collingwood also persuades her to help them inject the last chemical solution to Rick's body, which produces the effect similar to lobotomy. Abigail, knowing Rick will lose his memory on Earth if taking the shot, refuses helping Collingwood. However, Collingwood forcibly orders her as they are running out of time, and Rick will not survive on Earth's atmosphere soon. Slowly and carefully, Abigail sympathetically approaches Rick and injects him with the chemical solution. However, after doing so, she swiftly runs and drags Freya with her. Without Collingwood noticing, Abigail actually gives Rick a harmless saline solution. Thereafter, a military officer approaches Rick, who appears to be fainted, but gets stabbed in the neck. Rick then escapes and attacks the officers surrounding him. In panic, officers chase Rick and shoot him. Rick, wounded and weak, finds Abigail with Freya and Lucas in a facility in the building. Freya unhesitatingly treats his wounds. Unfortunately, police officers and Collingwood arrive and threaten Abigail that they'll shoot Rick if she resists again. Unafraid, Abigail curses him. Furious, Collingwood orders Solano to shoot Abigail, Lucas, Rick, and his employee, Freya. Confused, Solano, who has been vocally against Collingwood's experiments, refuses to follow his order. At the turn of events, Solano points his gun at Collingwood and is followed by the officers in the room. They arrest Collingwood for his treachery and unethical experiment. In relief, Abigail embraces Rick, who is currently suffering major injuries all over his body. Sometime later inside an aircraft, Abigail, Freya, Lucas, and Rick go to the NATO base to find another place for staying and continuing the research. Afterwards, Abigail and Dr. Freya become researchers at the NASA Titan II facility using more ethical methods to work on the Titan operation. Later on, Abigail happily watches the sky with Lucas, missing Rick, who now makes it to Titan successfully. He now lives as a homo titanian, exploring Titan alone. Rick, the first man to set foot on Titan, awaits for the coming of all humanity, including his family, to live and start again in their new home, Titan.